Godzilla vs Kong is coming soon to theaters and I wanted to make a video related to that. When giant monsters destroy cities, it creates an apocalyptic atmosphere which definitely draws attention to that film. Perhaps witnessing something this lethal and godlike enthralls the audience. I think this is why the recent trailers excited people so much. So without further ado, let's get to the list. Number 10. Scylla In 2019, Scylla appeared in Godzilla King of the Monsters. It is an armored giant cephalopod created as a minor titan that obeys Ghidorah and later Godzilla. Monarch, which is a scientific organization in the Monsterverse, confirmed that Titana Scylla was named by the ancient Greeks who interpreted her as a female sea monster. This titan stands 104 meters tall. In Godzilla King of the Monsters, Scylla is in a monarch containment facility in a desert and trapped under an oil rig. It is Ghidorah who awakens Scylla in the film. But she can't make it across America in time to see the Alpha who called her because Godzilla kills Ghidorah just minutes before her arrival. So she bows down to her new Alpha along with other Titans. At the number 9 we have Raijin. It is a category 5 kaiju and one of the strongest kaiju we see in the 2018 film Pacific Rim Uprising. Raijin is a bipedal kaiju moving like a T-Rex. It has a double layered skull. The plates on its outer head act as shields, protecting the inner head. They also serve as plasmic jaws, by absorbing kinetic energy delivered by punches and weapons. In the film, you can easily see its veins glow when it does that. After that, Raijin uses the absorbed energy to empower itself and redirect it towards the opponent. It is the largest and deadliest of the three kaiju that attacked Mega Tokyo in 2035. As if that were not enough, those three come together and form a bigger kaiju that we will touch on later in the video. When it comes to its height, Raijin is 106 meters tall. Number 8 is Behemoth. Just like Scylla, Behemoth made its first appearance in the 2019 film Godzilla King of the Monsters. It is a giant mammalian titan that obeys Ghidorah and later Godzilla. With its large curved tusks, Behemoth bears a resemblance to a mammoth but it is also a prehistoric ground sloth in a way. It also has a row of serrated granite spines running down his back. Moreover, he is capable of charging with enough force to demolish buildings in his path in the matter of an elephant. It is also believed that he can attack with the claws on his front limbs while standing on his hind legs. Sources indicate that Behemoth is 108 meters tall. Number 7 is Kong. One of Godzilla's chief rivals is undoubtedly the great ape himself. King Kong, also known as Titanus Kong, is a giant ape titan that first appeared in the 2017 film Kong Skull Island. He will also appear in the 2021 film Godzilla vs Kong, where the two will clash. He is an ape-like superspecies that evolved back in prehistoric times. While this superspecies shares a common ancestry with modern-day apes, it is considered to be an entirely new categorization of life on its own. The species resided on Skull Island for millions of years, but Kong is the only known surviving member of his kind after the Skull Crawlers killed his parents. So as an infant, he seems to show a great deal of loneliness. In his first film, Kong was approximately 31 meters tall, but as it is said in the film itself, Kong's got room to grow. So given that there is roughly 50 years between the events in Skull Island and the upcoming Godzilla vs Kong, it makes sense that Skull Island's king would grow up to be almost as big as Godzilla. There is not an official confirmation yet as to how tall Kong will be, but it sure will be the largest Kong has ever been on screen. I think he will be around 108 meters tall. Unlike Godzilla, who has incredibly thick scales that make him resist attacks from enemies, Kong's species are not born with an armor. This puts him in a disadvantageous position against things like, for example, Godzilla's atomic breath. However, this also brings us to an important advantage he has, which is using tools, as many primates do. As it is shown in the recent trailers, Kong holds an axe that is capable of absorbing the energy of that renowned atomic breath. The number 6 spot is Raiju, which stands 109 meters tall. It is a category 4 kaiju that appeared in the first Pacific Rim film in 2013. In the film, we see that Raiju protects the breach along with Scunner and Slatter. An aquatic creature, Raiju is likened to a crocodile in appearance and behavior. It has broad shoulders and a skin durable as an armor. Additionally, just like Raijin, the kaiju we mentioned earlier, it has a double-layered skull. 
We haven't seen the outer layer being tested in the film, but it probably functions as a helmet or something. In the film, a character named Tendo Choi says that it is the fastest kaiju ever. However, even if it is the overall fastest, I doubt it can run as fast as it swims. The number 5 spot on this list is Godzilla. This walking, atomic breathing and radioactive reptile has appeared in over 30 films since first being introduced in 1954. Godzilla, also known as Gojira, is expected to be at the same height as his 2019 version which reached a height of 119 meters in the film. Till the release of the trailers, we used to think that Godzilla doesn't blatantly attack or plow through ships at sea simply because they are there. It appeared to be that he simply considers humans to be tiny and insignificant, so does not consider them worth destroying. Not only that, in the end credits of his last film, it is mentioned that Godzilla is keeping other titans from attacking human settlements. But in Godzilla vs Kong, he suddenly begins to attack humans in an aggressive-like manner for unknown reasons. In the first film, a scientist describes Godzilla as the top of the primordial ecosystem, a god for all intents and purposes. I think this explains why we keep hearing that the world needs Kong over and over again in the trailers. Number 4. Scunner. Its height is 134 meters. You're looking at the biggest category 4 kaiju. It was one of the three protectors of the breach in the first film. Scunner resembles a bull in appearance and behavior. It is broad and stocky. Its two curved horns on its head act as battering rams against armored opponents like the Jaegers. Scunner has four arms that aid in its ability to move faster than its opponents underwater. Its plated body armor allows it to take great amounts of damage. Like most kaiju, it has a green glow throughout its body. As it is shown in the film, Scunner is able to work coordinately with other kaiju and that makes it even more dangerous in combat. We are at the top 3 and the third biggest monster is Ghidorah. King Ghidorah has always been considered Godzilla's arch nemesis. He has been featured in almost every version of Godzilla's storytelling. Most recently, Ghidorah was the primary antagonist in the 2019 film Godzilla King of the Monsters. This titan is one of the most memorable in the Godzilla franchise thanks largely to its menacing three-head design, twin tails and destructive powers like firing gravity beams. While flying, he can generate storms by using his hypertensile wings. Like most of his past incarnations, Ghidorah is larger than Godzilla in the MonsterVerse. He stands 159 meters tall. Other titans attack humans and cause damage because of carnivorous hunger or provocation. However, Ghidorah displays true malice. He's also an alien known for destroying ecosystems or literally entire planets. So I think it is safe to say that he is the most malevolent and hostile titan encountered so far. As we know, when he makes his way to Earth, Godzilla defeats him twice, but that wouldn't be the last time Ghidorah made an appearance. At the end of the King of the Monsters, it is hinted that Ghidorah could return to life, so it is plausible that we may see the beast once again in Godzilla vs Kong or in another MonsterVerse film. Number 2. Slattern Slattern is a Category 5 Kaiju. It is the final boss in the first film, Standing Guard at the Breach. It is the first Category 5 we watched on the big screen. The intelligence and high toxicity levels it has makes it one of the most lethal kaiju. As we see in the film, it uses its triple tails to pierce the armor of its enemy. Its tails spin and lash out at a really high speed, even with a heavy amount of underwater pressure working against them. The sound of Slattern's roar can emit sound waves that cause visible damage to the environment it is situated in. And lastly, its height is estimated at 181 meters. Before announcing the winner, I would like to touch on a monster we will definitely see on March 31st. Mechagodzilla. I will not give you the origin story of this titan because it'll spoil the film, but giving my prediction about its height will not do any harm. By looking at the leaked footage, I can easily say that Mechagodzilla is taller than both Kong and Godzilla. It might be around 130 meters tall. And the winner of this list is Mega Kaiju. It is a kaiju hybrid created using the forms of Category 4 and Category 5. As a fusion, the Mega Kaiju gains all the powers and abilities of the kaiju it is composed of. To give an example, it has Raijin's ability to redirect kinetic energy and Shrikethorn's spike tails that are used for mid-range attacks. In the film Pacific Rim Uprising, we see that Mega Kaiju releases that stored energy by punching the ground, unleashing a shockwave that causes enormous damage. While searching for Mega Kaiju's height, I came across an alleged height which was obviously wrong. 
Many sources remark that it is 128 meters tall, which is impossible considering the size of Slattern. Jaegers are about 75 meters tall and you can easily tell that Mega Kaiju is way bigger than Slattern by comparing their sizes with the Jaegers they're fighting against. If I had to guess, I would say Mega Kaiju is over 220 meters tall, literally towering over every monster on this list. Alright, that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications.